माय नेम इज राजीव श्रीधरन वेलकम टू सी एन सी लैंड हाउ यू एवर वर्क ऑन मैक्रो प्रोग्रामिंग इफ नॉट लेट स्टार्ट नाउ मैक्रो प्रोग्रामिंग इज फन some people call it as variable programming and some parametric programming fanu call it as custom macro a macro program can be helpful for making program for family of parts it can be used where a lot of calculations are involved you can also make custom cycles to perform 2.5d to 3d profiles but a word of caution Since a macro program can make changes in parameters, offset, etc., before starting to use, please remember to take a backup of offsets and setting parameters. Validate all conditions before you freeze the program. It may behave differently in different conditions. Enjoy the world of macro programming. First, let us see what is the meaning of macro. a single instruction that expands automatically into a set of instructions to perform a particular task so a macro program is a small program which does the work of a large program macro program is also called parametric programming variable programming custom macro etc let us see what are the applications of macro program it can be used as a single program for all the parts in a part family it can be used to make custom cycles for making difficult profiles and it can be used to make program for 2.5d profiles these sketches are examples for part families variables let us see this formula x plus 6 equals 10 in this x is a variable now in this sketch you can see a circle and radius and diameter is mentioned if you look at the formulas for a circle diameter of circle d equals 2 r circumference c equals 2 pi r area a equals pi r square so in all these cases you can see r is a variable when r the value of r is 10 then diameter is 20 circumference is 62.8 and area is 314.16 so similarly variables in macro programming is expressed by a numerical value preceded by symbol hash example hash 100 let us look at one part family for a washer so in this sketch you can see the cross section of a washer od id and jumper you can have n number of washers with similar configuration with just change in od id and jumper <laughs> if you want to make a program for this using the regular method program would be g0x102 0 positioning for facing g01x48f.1 so facing g0x94 z1 repositioning for chamfer 
G1 X100 Z-2 End of chamfer Z-7 OD turning to 7 mm G0 X102 Z-5 Retract by a small amount G28 U0 W0 Going to home Same program if you want to make it ready for a part family so that just by entering these three four values your program for your next part would be ready so how to make the program for this part using variables or macro let us see we have to define the variables so in this case we have already explained in this part family the diamond dimensions which are going to vary with the different parts are od id and chamfer so let us take od as hash 100 so in this case let us take value as 100 hash 101 equals to there is a chamfer length hash 102 equals 50 there is id Hash 103 equal to 0.1 that is feed rate in mm per revolution. So the above program rewritten with variables would be G0 X hash 100 plus 2. So hash 100 is having a value of 100 plus 2 mean 102. Z0. Next command for facing G01 X hash 102 minus 2 hash 102 is nothing but id minus 2 that means x48 f and hash 103 hash 103 is feed rate then rapid retract to g0 x hash 100 minus 2 multiplied by hash 101 plus 2 why? Because 2 mm is our chamfer that is in hash 101. So 2 multiplied by hash 101. Why? Because our dimensions are mentioned or x value is mentioned as a diameter. So chamfer value is 2 mean in diametrical notation chamfer diameter would be 100 minus 2 times 2 that means 100 minus 4 so that will be in z0 position so now you want to calculate for z1 so another 2 mm down so that's why 2 multiplied by hash 101 plus 2 mean 4 plus 2 that means 6 that would be the x value then G1 X hash 100 hash 100 is your OD Z minus hash 101 so hash 101 is having a value of 2 so Z minus 2 then Z minus 7 then again retract 2 mm more than what is program now so G0 X hash 100 plus 2 z minus 5 g28 u0 w0 form command so you can compare this variable program and regular program so all the diameters are mentioned as a function of a variable so the diameter wherever diameter is directly mentioned directly calling that uh, variable and wherever there is some calculation involved reading that calling that uh, calculation so like that now whenever you want to make another part just change the values of od id chamfer length and feed rate that means hash 100 to hash 103 now let us look another part family it's a rectangular block where we will be doing the milling operation 
A regular way of doing this is G01, X0, Y0, then Y50, F500, X100, Y0, X0, and then taking the tool up, G01 is at 5, G28, G91 is at 0, going to home. So, how we have taken the coordinates is like this. This is my 0, x0, y0, y50, x100, y0, x0. So, the same thing if I want to take using a variable. Hash 100 equals 100. So, that is my length. Hash 101 equal to 50. That is my width. And the feed rate I am defining in hash 103. 500. F 500. So, G01, X0, Y0. Then G01, Y hash 101. So, in this case, hash 101 equal to 50. So, in effect, this Y hash 101 will be equal to Y50. F hash 103 103 is 500 so f 500 it's hash 100 hash 100 is 100 so x 100 then y 0 x 0 then other things similar to this program so this is how part families are defined so if you are doing similar kind of part again and again you need to make the program only once then what you need to do is only changing the parameters, whatever macro variables you have defined, just changing those variables, what is given in the drawing. We have, you have to input the values as it is mentioned in the drawing. Once you define that, your program for the next part family member would be ready. Now. This is a table to show what are the different types of variable. Hash 0 is a null, null variable. That means there is no value. Hash 1 to hash 33 are called local variables. Local variables can only be used within a macro to hold data such as the results of operation. What happens is when the machine power is turned off, this local variables are also initialized to null, mean that value is not stored in the memory. Now, hash 100 to hash 149, that is common variables. So, we will be using this common variables most of the times. Common variables can be shared among different macro programs. When the power is turned off, this hash 100 to 149 are also initialized to none, null. Whereas variables hash 500 to hash 531, the data is even kept in memory even if you switch off the power. And the variables above hash thousands are system variables. System variables are used to read and write a variety of NC data items such as the current position and tool compensation values. Now for making programs we will be using common variables hash 100 to hash 149. Now let us understand the meaning of these operators eq mean equals to ne mean not equals to gt mean greater than ge mean greater than or equal to lt mean less than le mean less than or equal to now here these are the functions which you can use in your macro program for doing the calculations. 
you can do summation difference product quotient and you can also calculate trigonometric function sine cosine tangent arc tangent then other functions like square root absolute rounding off rounding down rounding up all these things are possible only that you have to use uh, the format as shown here for example if you want to calculate some tan then you have to write tan then square bracket open and for whatever variables or whatever values you want to calculate the tan you have to write it and then bracket close if you want to calculate a square root sqrt square bracket open the value and then the square bracket close now this go to n this is a branch statement this is a jump statement so wherever this is called in the program directly the control will move to this n number n number can be any block number defined in your program so as soon as the control read this go to command it will directly take the point point or control to this block number so this is called unconditional jumping there is no condition attached to it now there is something called a conditional jump so here if you see there is a condition if hash 1 greater than 10 then go to 2 so that mean if this condition is satisfied go to block number 2 so here suppose your hash 1 value is say 1 then is it greater than 10 no one is not greater than 10 so then it will take for processing so here whatever commands you write that will be done and the moment hash one value of hash one becomes greater than 10 the control will take it to block number 2 so this is called a conditional statement now there is another uh, con conditional expression called while and there is an expression do m this m can be 1 2 3 anything any number and when this condition is satisfied then there is a processing and when this condition is not satisfied then it will take the control out of this loop that is after end m let us look at this sample the sample program finds the total number 1 to 10 here you can see hash 1 equal to 0 so the hash 1 value is set to 0 initialized to 0 hash 2 is 1 it is a counter then there is a conditional expression while has to less than equal to 10 to 1 that mean when the value of has to is less than or equal to 10 then do this whatever is written above in 1 now what is the statements hash 1 equals to hash 1 plus hash 2 and then hash 2 equals hash 2 plus 1 if you look at regular mathematical terms so this equation seems to be a wrong equation for example if somebody say a equals a plus 1 which is wrong the whatever variables are written whatever is written in both side of the equation has to be equal what is written in the left hand side and what is written on the right hand side both should match so if you look at this in regular mathematical terms we will think that this is not correct because 
hash 2 equal to hash 2 plus 1 we are saying it is something like a equal to a plus 1 or b equal to b plus 1 which is not correct so whatever is written in both sides are not matching but in macro programming this is correct now in this this hash 2 this is a new hash 2 new value of hash 2 and the right hand side hash 2 is old value of hash 2 and so that mean the meaning of this is new hash 2 equals old hash 2 plus 1 what is old hash 2 1 new hash 2 equal to 1 plus 1 2 so next time when it read 2 plus 1 3 3 plus 1 4 like that it will keep reading so how the same thing is applied to this hash 1 is equal to 0 here this is new hash 1 new hash 1 equals 0 plus 1 so that means 1 so next time it will be 1 plus 1 so it will keep going on so this hash 2 will keep incrementing and this hash 2 will be applied here and the hash 1 also will be keep kept on incrementing so this is how this entire process will happen now i have posted in some of the groups a programming challenge can you do circular machining with nmil without using g02 or g03 and the condition is you cannot use a cad cam or you cannot use a standard cycle so there can be different answers some of the controllers even without using g02 and g03 you can make circle but here the question was not that question is where you use programming standard such as an iso standard where g02 and g03 is normally used for doing circular interpolation so the question is can you make can you machine a circle by using g01 yes the answer is yes we'll see how so before we see that let us have a quick recap on the trigonometry which you would have learned during your school days high school days this triangle is a right angle triangle right angle mean one angle is 90 degree and there are two other angles so one angle if you take the side opposite to this angle is called opposite side and the side which is near to this is called adjacent and the longer side is called hypotenuse so the formula for adjacent side from this you can take adjacent side equal to cos theta multiplied by hypotenuse same way opposite side equals sin theta multiplied by hypotenuse so the coordinate of a circle any point on the circle if you have the angle and you have the radius then you can find out the other two sides that will be your x coordinate and y coordinate so now the program to cut a circle using g01 how to make this is a flowchart for that first you have to assign values your counter is set to zero and you have to keep on evaluating the counter n is calculated as number of points so how many points you need to cut this so this circle is divided into many points so you know that the total degree for the circle is 360 degrees so you have to uh, divide this 360 degree into number of segments 
So whatever accuracy you need, based on that you have to divide. And if counter is less than or equal to that number of points, total number of points, if it is less, then calculate the coordinates using the trigonometry and then move the command move the tool with g01 command and again the control is brought back to the checking whether the counter is less than or equal to n and when the counter value becomes total number of points then the controller will take to end so this is the flow chart this is how the cut will happen. It will start from here. It will keep moving and come back to the original position. Now, let us see the sample program percentage O1234 circle macro. So O1234 is your program number. Please remember that what we are discussing is a FANU controller format. Other controllers can have some variations in the way it is defined. But with minimum changes, you will be able to apply this knowledge into other controllers as well. Now, G28, G91, Z0 is a home command to take the tool to Z axis home position. Then G28, G91, X0, Y0. So the tool is taken to machine x0 y0 home then g0 g54 g90 g64 so work coordinate system g54 is called absolute measurement system is called and then continuous mode g64 is called then t01 m6 is a tool call tool change g0 x0 y0 the tool is first position here G43, H01, Z100. So the tool offset is called and the tool is positioned at Z100. S1000 M03, the RPM is defined with clockwise rotation. G0, Z5, rapid movement to Z5. Then G1, Z0, F1000. Finally, the tool is positioned to where it is to cut and then Whatever value we want to define as variables, we have to define. So now since we are going to cut one diameter, one circle, diameter of the circle is important. And from where you want to start the cut, the start angle is important. And how many points you want to define. So in terms of angle increments, that is to be given. Radius is automatically calculated, diameter by two. And number of point is calculated based on the angle increment. So a circle is totally 360 degree. So angle increment is divided so that you get total how many number of points are there. 360 divided by hash 102. Hash 102 is angle increment. But in this case, this is one. So number of points would be 360. Now, when you start the program, the counter is set to zero. Then inside the loop, you can keep incrementing the counter. Feed rate is mentioned as hash 110. So this is how the tool will move. Now, let us see how the branching is done. So whatever parameters we have defined, we have defined the diameter of circle, start angle, angle increment, radius, number of points calculated, radius calculated, counter is set to zero, then feed rate. So the first line is while 105 less than equal 104 to 1. What is 105? Counter. If counter is less than or equal to 104, what is 104? It is number of points. So the counter will keep on incrementing. 0, 1, 2, 3 like that. So here the total number of points since the angle increment is 1 is 360. 360 divided by 1 that means 360. So the
the counter will keep on incrementing here the moment the counter becomes more than hash 104 mean more than the total number of points then the controller will jump to the end so this is while expression while command this is end command so this is a loop this is called a loop when the process is going on it will keep on checking and as long as this value is less than or equal to this value this process will keep on doing so let us have a quick comparison of our flowchart so we have assigned the values that we have seen and the counter is checked counter is 105 it is continuously checked with the total number of points and the moment it is increased then it comes to end otherwise the control will go back and it will keep on working calculation of coordinates and moving with g01 g64 g01 x hash 107 y hash 108 f hash 110 107 is hash 103 into cos 106 So you can see as long as the hash 105 is less than or equal to hash 104 this process will keep running and the moment hash 105 becomes more than 104 this will come out so these are the values hash 107 equals to hash 103 hash 103 is radius so this is nothing but r cos theta hash 106 is a calculated angle hash 101 is the original start angle plus hash 105 is a counter so the first position it will be hash 101 itself because this will be zero then hash 101 plus whatever angle increment is there that will keep adding first time one time second time third time fourth time like that it will keep on incrementing and finally this angle will become 360 degree addition to your start angle so this is how this program will run and these are the end commands the tool will come back to x0 y0 then z100 then home command and the program end so a quick recap with the usage of macro programming you can handle most of your programming challenges but a lot of caution is to be exercised to avoid accidents why because it can handle tool offset then it can handle setting parameters so you need to be sure of what you are doing before you start using macro programming ensure that you take backup of offset then setting parameters all those things you have to be sure what you are doing is correct program made to do circle machining in this video can be also used to do PCD hole drilling with minor modifications. People may ask why, what is the use of doing this exercise? This is to understand how a macro program can be used to do a difficult activity or a repetitive activity or making a part family. So you can read and write, write parameters and offsets using macro variables which we will discuss in another video. Programming resources. So the macro program discussed in this video is available as a free download in cnc-learning.com.
Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have liked it, press like. Subscribe the channel for more such videos. Click the bell icon for getting notified on new videos. I will come with more videos like this. Bye for now.